Okay, we're recording. Now let's go live out onto Facebook. Uh, here we go. There we go. We're being live streamed now on Facebook. Hello on Monday. Okay. This is our little Monday get together when we get together with some really nice people, really nice people for a friendly conversation to get you away from all that stuff on MSNBC and CNN. And even if some of you are watching Fox, oh, my God. I mean, it, it, it's just so depressing. So here we don't depress people. We just invite some wonderful people. And uh, we uh, just talk about nice things for the most part. Occasionally something will come up, but we don't want it to uh, particularly. Uh, and we don't get into it in any great amount of uh, uh, any deep thought. Okay. Here we go. There's, uh, there's. Oh, hello to our old friend uh, Andrew Deutsch, and uh, there's uh, Charlene. She's bouncing around with her. <laughs> Trying to get this thing not to fall over on me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's killing me. Uh, <laughs> and here comes, uh, here comes uh, 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 Marjorie. Oh, hello, Marjorie. Hi. She's currently <laughs> still my wife. Um, Len LaFrisco, Paula Levin, and uh, gee, some of these people are just coming in without me even bringing them in. I wonder why. Hmm. Well, I don't mind. How you all doing? Good. Here comes Good. more. Here comes Scott Boddicker. Hanging in there. Let me admit Spot, Scott Boddicker. I can't talk anymore. Scott Boddicker. Scott Boddicker. Anyway, he's coming in here. Uh, Charlie Wallace is about to join us here. Oh boy, we're we're getting going. Oh, let me get my coffee. Uh, there's Charlie all the way over here. What? There's Charlie. I know there's Charlie. Well, almost there's Charlie. Not completely. There's Charlie. See? Hey guys. Now you can say there. Go ahead, Marjorie. You can say there's Charlie. There's Charlie. Okay. It's working this week. Hey. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Marjorie uh, had her birthday the other day. Uh, Happy, birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, she's 75. I'm 80. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she makes a big deal about I'm 80. I'm 80. I'm 80. And 80 I'm, is I'm, major I'm, I'm almost woman, going, I'm Alex. Almost, I'm almost going Alex, on 84, Alex, dear. What? Alex, <laughs> 80 is major for any woman. Well, pretend <laughs> I'm a woman. <laughs> What's it major for me? He's one of Why is it major for a woman, but it isn't major for a man? Will you please answer me that here? Uh, it's supposed to be a friendly broadcast, but this is how we argue. Go ahead. <laughs> how's it? How's it that uh, that uh, that important to a woman, where it's not that important to a man? Where do we start, Marjorie? <laughs> <laughs> To begin with, when we turn 80, we're probably at a point where the prostate doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so that's bad enough. You know, we can't just say, oh, adios, Marjorie. I'm going to go out and find myself a younger woman. <laughs> of course, there isn't anything for her to play with. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> so so why is it worse for a woman? You're not <laughs> answering my question. It goes without explaining, Alex. Everyone else but you understands it. Could it be that women are a little more vain than men are? <laughs> well, I don't think you're getting I'm an answer. waiting for an answer. Darlene, you answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be 69 next month, so I'm pushing okay. 70 now. 69 wow yeah so it's a good one. and mandy's almost 80 now <laughs> hi mandy hi hi i just told i just outed you as to how old you are i told them you were 80 <laughs> me yeah why i don't know to make marjorie feel better <laughs> is that the birthday marjorie just had yeah yeah well we, yeah see we i got through it mandy I'm so, I, I'm actually shocked you're 80. I can't believe yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. 80 is fucking 80. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> well, you don't look 80. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, now that she's 80, she's the oldest woman I've ever gone out with. <laughs> <laughs> so she was just saying that it's worse for a woman when she turns 80 and than it is for a man. And I'm going, why? You know, would you agree with that, that it would be worse for no, a woman? But you had yours when you turned 40. That That's when you had your big... No, I didn't. Men, women and... men, get, men look better and, and people think they look better as they get older. And then women, we get, you know, she's getting old. She's got wrinkles. She's whatever. But men, people are saying, oh, but they look, look better when they turkey get older. Neck, I got a turkey neck. I got bags under so do I. I. How, how do I. How do I, how did I get better? Where, where did I go? Right, here, here's, here's a question. Yeah. If you see an older gentleman mm -hmm. with a woman who's younger, mm -hmm. the difference between that and seeing an older woman with a fellow who's younger is is different. It's different. I always say good for her. Yeah, good for you. I I never have a problem with that. Good for you. I'm happy. You know, you should. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty unusual. Well. I, you know, I, does it have more to do with the women who don't want to see a young go out with a younger guy because of what the perception might be, rather than just do it? Yeah, and, and it it it's always assumed, you know, that older people want younger people, and I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, uh, I, I went out with a very young girl for a while. When I, I, I saw, knew her for 12 years. So, you know, she she moved into old age so far as I was concerned. <laughs> but I started seeing her when she was 18. Uh, this is when I was in my early 50s, I'd say. Wow. Wow. What do you mean, wow? Now you're going, <laughs> wow. What's wow about that? The youngest, per I've dated women 10 years younger than me. And I've we dated women 10 years older than me. I haven't been outside that range. Good for you. Good for you. This one was, I think, 24 years younger than I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, you can either go, uh, oh, that's horrible, or lucky you. Uh, you know, there are two ways of looking at it. I don't know. I just I, I it was just love. I didn't I didn't let age enter into it. I wasn't looking for somebody young, right? That was not my intention. Uh, most of the women I had dated up until that time been maybe within 10, 10, maybe 10 years younger at the most, you know. And there were a few women who were a little older than I was. You know, so I, I, that never became a thing with me as a guy. I mean, did you as a guy, Charlie, uh, go looking for younger women? No, I don't know. No, no, you know, you didn't. And I never looked for younger women either. Look, I, I went with an old bag. Look at Marjorie. Uh, and, <laughs> not an old bag. <laughs> Ooh. But anyway, so anyway, so we, we it, it's time for her birthday. And of course, I have to take her out to dinner. Uh, because, and I, you know, and we so she picks the restaurant, you know, and it's a nice Give restaurant. Give her supersize. What? Did you let her <laughs> Say that again. Did Did you let her supersize the meal? I let her supersize the meal. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we go out to dinner, and it, it, it's a good dinner. We have a nice dinner, and he, she gets uh, her her uh, yearly. We went to this place last year too. Her yearly. Your birthday. Her yearly. It's your birthday, Alex. And my birthday too, your birthday and my birthday last year. Last year, and yeah, they give you a, you tell them, hey, it's her birthday. <laughs> so they then bring you a little scoop of ice cream with a sparkler in the middle of it that's all over the place. And um, we had a you had a good time, didn't you? A yeah, good meal, absolutely. Uh, all of a sudden, I guess going home, your legs started to hurt. No, it hurt during the night. Uh, I didn't. It, I woke up with it. Oh, the pain! The pain was when we got home because I remember I could hear you all the way down the hall going, "Oh, oh!" But, but oh. I woke up with it. 
But then she woke up with it. I mean, just horrible pain in her leg. Uh, so that was God getting her for her birthday. It's like behind <laughs> the knee, not where the bone is. I don't know what it is. Oh, here we go. Organ recital. No, I just said it. That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how she spent her birthday. It was in pain. Oh, boy. It was fine. It was a great night. I enjoyed it. Well, good. I'm glad you did. <laughs> it's what it was, I was meant to have you do. I kind of got nauseous for my for, for my dinner because it was very rich. I got beef bourguignon. Mm. Yeah, but it was it, too rich. I could feel it coming up uh, later on. Yeah, I can't eat rich foods as, like I used to. I used to love rich foods, you know, and now it simply means uh, acid reflux later on, you know. So. I don't know life. Well, what am I saying? All you people are kind of getting along in years, yeah. <laughs> you know. Except for Mandy, yeah. and, and God knows she <laughs> holds that above us. You know, <laughs> look at me, I'm so young. You know, how do you feel? My deposit thing was going. What did you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I said Mandy's the young one here. You know, and, and she holds it over us. But you're 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 how old now? Fifty five? Did you say? Fifty seven. Andrew's younger than me. Fifty seven? Really? Wow. Not, not really, he I doesn't look as good. You're born in sixty six, <laughs> right? Sixty six. What month? April. Yeah, so just a few months younger than you. See, I was born I... in August. <laughs> now you and you look great for fifty seven. Thanks. You look great. For you look great for thirty-five. Yeah. The question is how she knew my age. <laughs> Talker. Really, I'm a stalker. But then again, everybody looks young to me. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, I get, do women worry about their age more than guys do? I think so. You do. Why? I mean, does well, it, well, Charlene was saying? Yeah, the, the society pressures and everything. I think women put more pressure on themselves than society does. But I, I do. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. All the magazines, the the just just go on Facebook and see what does she look like now with the celebrity stuff. It's just cruel. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. ridiculous. Well, no, yeah, people get old, you know, yeah. and they don't look like they used to look. In fact, I I I don't know if I look anything like I looked when I was forty. Yeah, my my wife's much older than me, but she still looks younger than me. R really? Yeah. Oh, you can well that look. You can't tell how old somebody is just by their age. You have to cut them in half and count the rings. Well, I I also. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I often talk about the time my ex-wife Ronnie wanted me to go to her uh, her. Uh, uh, what do you call it? What's the thing they have when you... Reunion. Reunion. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how old it was. It was like they they were all in their 50s. So it had to be like the 40th, 30th year reunion or 35th or something like that. And I walk into this room and everybody there, you have to realize if you have center pole here, these old people are all probably six months on this side or on this side. Yeah. So really, they're all within a year's range. And I looked at them and I went, it doesn't make sense. This, the, the range of eight, the way people look, the range of their ages, range of their ages looks bigger because yeah. it just, you know, I mean, you couldn't tell. Somebody looked like they were 10 years older than that. And other people looked like they were 10 years younger than that. Yeah. Everybody ages differently, you know. Mm -hmm. And I hate the ones that age younger. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, oh, my my echo just clunked at me. I don't know why. What, did I say something echo? <laughs> I say I say oh I say she has a friend called E C H O, <laughs> and every time she tells me I go who are you going out to lunch with and she says that and uh, all of a sudden I hear clunk from my. Alexa, you know. She'll say, what did you just say? 
<laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. But anyway, so, I mean, age is, is strange that way. I mean, you don't really, and I don't know why some people age faster than others. Others age slower than others. Um, but, uh, you know, 57, you look grand, Mandy. And she does. Yes, she does. Audrey, you look phenomenal. Good. It's good genes, I think. My mom tells me that she was always thought she was younger. So, I don't know, just baby face, maybe. I have no idea. Your mother, is she, is she still around, right? Mm -hmm. She's is, your age. Huh? She's my she, age? <laughs> How does she look? Just like yeah. me. She's good. I don't really have that many wrinkles. You know, she still looks... I mean, she's 83, I and mean, her hair's white, so you're going to know she's an older woman. Yeah. Smart. smart. Short. 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 wrinkles. But she has pretty kind of really smooth skin. I was I was examining her one day, and she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm looking at you. have no wrinkles. That's she interesting. That's interesting. I had a, gr a grandfather who was old, and I always made a big deal out of the fact that he didn't have any wrinkles. You know, and I said, you don't have wrinkles. You don't look like an old man. So, you know. Well, your mother was lucky genetically, and you're probably lucky genetically, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Edward Berger wasn't. That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say hello to you earlier? Oh, that's okay. You I mean you could skip a week? No, 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 no. I, 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 I like to say hello to everybody, <laughs> and then when I say goodbye to everybody. I say to myself that I say goodbye to everybody. All right. You know, so thank you. But anyway, by the way, I'm running out of this. Anybody know where I can get it? Oh. Uh, Costco. Stop carrying my local Costco. is not carrying. Well, they just don't have it now, Alex. Well, they, they don't haven't had it for like two months. Well, they might have it now. You have an order. Oh, no, I looked. They they don't have it now either. Okay, that's why I'm complaining. So I'll have to go back to the Kirkland version, which isn't bad, you know. Hmm. I'm very thirsty today, and I don't know why. I'd say, what's happening in the world we want to talk about, but no. it's, it's all depressing. <laughs> yeah, it's the only one thing you want to I do. I am get, having a good time, and this is not really political. This is just part of Marjorie's life, my life. We're having just an absolute delight watching our judge, <laughs> judge <laughs> our our, our yeah. case with the landlord, because he's the judge in the Trump case. Oh, we, really? Yeah. 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 Oh shit. Yeah. Fuck. Judge, uh, judge, uh, and Gore. Well done. Uh, and he, uh, uh, I, I'm just, we're just, just so delighted that he's doing this because every time they they have all these sketches they do in the, in the courtroom or a, a picture they take, you know, when they're allowed to take pictures, and we're just going. He's got a smile on his face all the time. He's having the time it. of his life, and he's nailing Trump on everything, yeah. you know. And, and the only thing that Trump should know, you know, you should know when you go into a courtroom, if some judges you can go after like he does, and others you can't because they don't take crap from anybody. And Angoran doesn't take crap from anybody. Uh, and uh, in fact, he didn't take it from a, somebody in our trial. He nailed him, as a matter of fact, for it. So... Uh, it's kind of fun to watch this because we're it it's not like we're cheering against Trump or anything like that. He, whatever happens, happens with that. We're cheering for our judge. Yeah. You know, and every time he does something that's just ballsy, I would go, yeah, <laughs> you know, good for our judge. Uh, you didn't know that, uh, Mr. Deutsch? What? 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 Don't he hear. can't hear you. I have my mute button on. Yeah. yeah, I've been I've been following the case today and the madness of yeah. Lord Menace. Yeah, yelling but, at the judge, calling him a fraud, almost getting kicked out of the courtroom. Yeah, well, he, he never called him a fraud. Yes, he did. No, he called him. He he said the company may have, have in the in his original 
you no, know, no, no, no. The summary, the, 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 summary the, judgment. The past, the past uh, president, aka Agent Orange, called the judge a fraud. Oh, he called him a fraud. Yeah. 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 But oh, he, I didn't hear that. That was today. Yeah. 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 He almost got thrown out of the courtroom. Well, then he's the first fraud I've ever known. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. See, I'm rooting for. I'm rooting against Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you said nobody's rooting against Trump. I'm rooting against Trump. It, well, I'm just of, expecting him to get what he deserves. I'm oh not no, he. Let, anybody. Let me. Let me. Let's not get into the political yeah. angle of this. But he has already made the judgment. This is just to find out how much. How much? Of, how much? Yeah. How much of a fine he's going to have to pay? His judgment will make him have to give up all his companies in New York City, and they re may pull his uh, ability to even uh, be incorporated in New York. Yeah, in New York yeah. State. Yeah. He'll yeah. lose all of that. Yeah, what, what, what a shame! What he, but what he loses most of all, okay, so we get a little political here. Yeah, right. What he loses most of all is this ability to sell that Trump name and stamp it on any building that he franchises, okay? Because nobody wants to put their name on the building. In fact, there are people, Marjorie has a friend, ECHO. E ECHO, her, they, her husband. They, they, got, they got, a, got an apartment in Trump apartment or something, whatever. Trump it was a whole slew of apartments on the river. They had Trump on their building and they got the right to pull the name off. Because well, they, they were co-op. They could decide anything they want. Well, yeah, but also they were a co-op, and they decided they want to take the take name it off because it was, it, it was lowering. It was lowering the value of their property. Yeah, and it was the first <laughs> building. It was the first Trump building when all this way, way before all this started. The, the, yeah. the consequence is worse than you're saying, though, Alex. If he, if the judge rules, <clears throat> excuse me. They could be forced to liquidate all of the assets owned by this New York corporation. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Give up all his yeah. I mean, he could he could lose everything that's that's registered to that company because yeah. they dissolved the actual corporation. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. it's significantly more severe than just not being able to do business. Well, they, yes, they, they could take they could yeah. impound all of his properties. Okay, well let's not get again, let's not get, yeah. get political. Yeah, yeah. Let's get financial here for a second. His feeling was is that mar-a-lago is worth a billion and a half dollars <laughs> there's a little problem with that because the state of florida valued it at 30 million yeah, yeah. that's what he's paying taxes on yeah yep. that's what he's paying taxes on so it, it's that's it. that's what this whole case is about but again i'm just so happy for my judge because he just looks like he's having the time of his life <laughs> And, and retire I, after this. And if I had to give Trump any advice, don't screw with this guy. Don't mm -hmm. screw with him. He doesn't take nonsense from anyone, you know, especially when you go after his law clerk. He and, he would, and he would say, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How can a 77 year old man just call people names like that? It's just, it's remarkable that that's even <laughs> a thing. It's a mob boss. He's a mob boss, Len. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's get away from that. That's getting too Please. Cool. And I, I, I don't, uh, you know, that's one of the, it, but it doesn't give me agita because I like seeing my guy up there. <laughs> he's, he's doing a great job. He is really, he's doing a very good job. I wish they had cameras in that courtroom, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, he, he, he don't want cameras in that courtroom. He'll use it to his oh, advantage. Oh, no, you don't want to have ca cameras in the courtroom because, and somebody said this today, if he had cameras in the courtroom, he would be playing to those cameras. I mean, he, That's he, right. He thinks he is anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's bad enough the way it is, but he he's playing. If there were cameras in there, he'd be running for president on. And, yeah, true. But the problem is without the cameras, one thing happens in the courtroom and he comes out and claims the exact opposite happened. Yeah. Yeah. But... I just think I think the judge made that decision because he knew he would what he would do with the cameras, you know, and that he didn't want people running for president in his courtroom. Mm -hmm. It's not what his courtroom is about. So I I kind of I kind of well there was there was also the argument about uh, um uh, um if if there were cameras in the courportroom then then uh, people would see. 
um, the circus and and the turning it into a circus. But you know, it, it really doesn't matter if you if you televise it. It wouldn't really matter what was going on in the courtroom or not because the the um, various networks would show snippets. Yeah. Well, and they, 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 they would edit it so, so that so that it would it would look good for whoever they wanted. Yeah, to but look if they from, it, it, from a it, campaign, it, sorry, from from a campaign perspective, it, he, the stuff where he thinks he's being super powerful with his bullshit could get edited for him to show what a macho jackass. Well, that's is. exactly that's just, it. In fact, he yeah. gave long lectures when he was on the stand, and I'm sure it'll be edited and come out for some of his campaign. Well. Welcome, uh, and welcome to our new political program here. On uh, this a, it's not really political as much as informational. Well, I think it's a, it, you can ask why, why, you know, about the it, certain trials, I think you can put on uh, camera. Uh, I think in the, uh, jo the Floyd uh, murder trial, wasn't it? Yeah. On First their, one. Yeah. That kind of thing you can this questionable you know i think his georgia criminal trial is going to be televised yeah, yeah it, yes. will, it will yes be. and you watch him act up in that one you know mm -hmm. looking at the camera and doing a tap dance the, the the real the real problem taken away from who we're talking about is at what point in time did it become all right to be that aggressive and that nasty towards the system during a trial well, and what it you, is you could just that, i mean how who else who else can get away with being yeah. on trial, well, you no. attacking the judge, the assistant, making putting out, making people threaten them, all of the things that are going on. No one. It's the new. It's the new defense. If if yeah, you're accused of something, just attack the system. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, there's that, never that, been that, a case like this. That's also a complete disregard for the law, for the uh, judgment of law. You know, when you go into a courtroom, mm -hmm. I, I remember when we went into the courtroom, I felt like I had to be in my best behavior because I. I, I had to give the even though the judge was not doing stuff in our favor, and even though his assistant wasn't either, uh, although it came out okay in the end for us, well, kind of okay. Uh, it, you, you go into a courtroom like that, and you give it your respect, no matter what you think of what they're uh, how the judge is doing something in uh, uh, against you or for you or whatever here's the one other thing they were saying today they were making a big deal out of the fact the judge was passing notes back and forth between he and the law clerk the his assistant that happens all the time yeah no he i, I from i found out in that courtroom she actually knew the law better than the judge did judges you know don't have to be lawyers they can be yeah they can be me and I go and I run for for uh, uh, for for court judge, and I win. Okay, now I go in there. What do I know about law? But I have a law clerk who knows everything about the law, and so she tells me what I can do and can't do. And she does the research. And she does the research, absolutely. Now she could be wrong. You know, some of the stuff she was doing in our case, she I think she was wrong, but that doesn't matter. He probably needed that information from somebody else and somebody who researched it constantly. You know, he wants to go home and watch television. Come on, you know. Um, but this guy turned out in the end, we, we went to his chambers, which disappointed me greatly because you'd think chambers are aligned with law books and, no, and, 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 and a couple what, of kind of, what kind of wood, you know, cedar. Uh, shelves and and a big giant beautiful judge like desk no it was like a back room it was what three desks it, it, it I had, think three desks one for an intern yeah and they they were all cheap cheap horrible desks yeah. you know? and I'm going government issued I, I like in the movies you know come see me in my chambers what it wasn't it what? wasn't it wasn't a movie set right no no it was just a dump <laughs> <laughs> Just an absolute dump, and I'm going. Gee, I I thought I'd go into the judge's chamber, but anyway, he said, "Come back to my chambers," and so I went back to cha their chambers. And he said, "We just wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to congratulate you on making a deal and taking care of your part of this whole trial, and 
We really are happy for you. And then she said, absolutely. I'm just delighted. We like you. And, you know, it was just a really nice thing. And he was a nice guy. And uh, we talked a little bit about what he had done in life and what I had done in life. And what, what, did, he he what did he tell you about himself? I, I, nothing much, just that, you know, it, it's a little, like, I can't even remember now. It was things about life. Is he a New Yorker? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and he was just talking about, in general, all the various, uh, uh, you know, things that he had done in life and so on. It was just nice. You know, it was just a nice little back and forth conversation. Uh, and so uh, I liked him. You know, I I walked out. I said to Marjorie, you know, that's really a nice, pretty, pretty good guy. You know, while he's playing judge, we weren't that happy with him. But that, that should be what you know about the person the most is what happens when he's off stage, let's say. And this guy... And her, they're both very nice. And uh, we we appreciated it. And uh, then when he came down with his judgment, we appreciated him even more. You know, of course, our landlords aren't living up to it, but, you know, <laughs> and we're having to fight them again, tooth and nail. So anyway, but that's another story altogether. But anyway, so the, let's get away from this again. This is the most political this program has ever gotten, and we really weren't political. No. Yeah, no, we were really talking more about, you know. You started it, Alex. Oh, you started it. the justice system, you know. <laughs> you started it. She, no, she, uh, so anyway, she, she was sick for a couple of days. She was not feeling well. Who? It, what? Who? You. And then we have guests. Uh. <laughs> For seven days. <laughs> no, it's okay. You know, it's it's Albert, so be nice. Yeah, but you know, be nice. Be nice. I am, but seven days is long. I don't care what. Seven saying. days having people come visit you is a long amount of time. Is a long one. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I you see, I watch TV in the guest room. It's my kind of my man cave, and I go in there to watch TV. Well, if we have guests. I can't go well, in there. To, sleep early, so I can't go in there to watch TV. I have to watch it with Marjorie or go into the living room. But then again, they go oh, to the so living room cool. to watch TV. So now I only have the bedroom and I have to watch everything Marjorie wants to watch, <laughs> which are usually like Turkish soap operas. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Thanksgiving's just around the corner, so turkey's appropriate. Yeah, turkey's appropriate. <laughs> there you go. Well, we're having a bunch of people over. For, what are you all doing for Thanksgiving? Anybody doing anything special? I'm having my family here. Oh, okay. Do you make a good turkey? Well, you know what? I don't know. Probably not. What do you mean you? My don't... son usually cooks, but he's but we're coming here this time, so I'm gonna do the best I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's that's an advantage of age because I used to do all the cooking, and now I just show up to uh, my son and daughter-in-law's house, and it's quite nice. Every year when I was single and I lived in San Francisco, I would invite all the comedians over who didn't have any place to go because they were, you know, their families were out of town or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would make a big turkey myself, and and serve them uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. um, that was every year. Uh, didn't ever uh, send out for one to be made for me. I made it myself because I make a hell of a turkey. And uh, it was just nice to have all these people over who wouldn't have had a Thanksgiving otherwise. Because you know? when you're on, when, either when you're on the road and you're a comedian, or you're a comedian who has moved to like San Francisco so that you can get a career and find a career, uh, it, it, it's really very lonely. And so uh, it was always very nice to have those people over to, you know, for uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday, actually. I like it the best. All you're expected to do on Thanksgiving is eat. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it it puts no obligations on you. you have to, don't have to go out and buy gifts, and you don't have to. Uh, you, it, just the pressure isn't there. The holiday pressure isn't there. And I like it. I've always liked it. Anybody else agree with me on that? I do. 
It's really the nicest one. Yeah. And there's always three football to... games. Yeah. <laughs> there are? Yeah. <laughs> and also, I don't know if anybody's ever watched that movie. I mean, I'm sure you have Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Mm -hmm. And I love it because it's it's for the holidays, Thanksgiving. Yeah. So I, I know. That's like my favorite holiday movie. It's the only real Thanksgiving movie, isn't it? I feel like it, yeah. <laughs> the only one I know of. Doesn't exclude anyone. And it it has no religious theme to it in most homes. So you can have everyone there and enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. What's and the British one we love, Alex, for Christmas? Oh, uh, uh, Love Actually. Love Actually. Yes. Uh, it's so great. That That's a great film. Yeah. That's just you can watch it every year. Well, because it's a holiday film, it's a film that takes place at Christmas, but it's not a yucky Christmas film. Yeah. You know, but it, it's a lovely film, just a lovely film. The ending, I love the ending of that. I, I, I have to admit, sometimes I cry at the end of movies. Do you cry, Charlie? Yeah, I yeah, do. Do. <laughs> huh? Yes, I do. You do. Right. How many here cry at the ends of some movies? Of course. All the time. Sometimes. What do you mean, of course? Andrew Deutsch didn't say he cried. <laughs> I bet he does. Len LaFrisco, <laughs> Len LaFrisco didn't say. Did you you cry at the end of movies? You have. I have. Like sure. what what movie do you remember? Uh, Die Hard? <laughs> <laughs> yes. My well favorite done. Christmas well movie. Done. Yeah, that's a great Christmas movie, right, Charlie? <laughs> yes, okay. it is. That's a good the one, Die Hard. The one film that I just absolutely turned into a a bit just a oh bawling little baby was um let me just put myself in the center here. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, was um, a film maybe a lot of you have never seen called The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Oh, yeah. What it is, it's an opera. Years ago. The whole, the whole, all, all the dialogue is sung. But it's the music is incredible. And you've heard some of the music in your yeah. lifetime from it. Like, uh, I will, you know, if you, uh, da, 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 I will wait for you, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway. And the ending, I don't know what it is, because it shouldn't make me cry, but I cry every time I see it. And I, I think it's the music, because they would play that I Will Wait For You song. Mm -hmm. And it's about, you know, the guy goes away to war, and she thinks he's dead, and he thinks she has disappeared. And then she went away and married somebody, but she, he doesn't, she doesn't know he's alive. And uh, at the end of the movie, they both find each other. Although she's married and he's married and he has a happy family and she has a happy family. But she pulls into his gas station and oh. there he is and it's snowing. And this whole thing goes on. And then that music starts swelling up. <laughs> and then my eyes start swelling up. Oh, sure. And then she she takes off and he's standing there in the middle of the snow in his gas station and his kid comes running up to him and his wife and they're all hugging. And I am just, I'm crying talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just, it just, you know, another film I cried at the end of the way we were. Yeah. Ah. Just, that That's a five handkerchief picture. I'm yeah, sorry. that's a crying movie. You know. Uh, but I asked, once I asked uh, Marvin Hamlish, I said, I went and saw, you know, the, the way we were. And he wrote, but he didn't write the song. But he, I think he arranged it or something for that movie. It was written by Alan and Marilyn Bergman, who were the aunt and uncle of a girl I once dated. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you another story about that in a second. But I asked Hamlish, I said, you know, I cry at the end of movies like you know, the way we were. I said, the music has something to do with it, doesn't it? He said, oh, there's a crying chord. <laughs> he said, anytime I want to put something in a movie to make people cry, I will put that chord in the music. And people will cry. 
It's just a natural reaction to that. Oh, kid. that's funny. And I, yeah, I thought that was amazing. I thought it was absolutely amazing. I think that's very cool. Yeah, the yeah. prying cord. But he said it, you, it, it's a it's a manipulation of the audience that you use when you're when you're doing something like that. But um, well, I, was I know, I know. There's a uh, excuse me. I know there's a kind of manipu man manipulation with like a when when something goes up, uh, um, um, it, it goes. It, I can't explain it, but the, the, there's a, a um, it changes chords and it 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 always has an uh, um, an emotional effect. The, the chord change. It's like it, it, the the, um, the the tune is here and then it's it's higher and it always works yeah it always works i'll tell you the funny story about alan and marilyn bergman they wrote tons of hit songs for movies especially and um um this girlfriend of mine was got sick i can't remember what was wrong with her and she and she was staying out at her aunt and uncle's place alan and marilyn bergman recuperating and uh she said come on out visit me you we'll just hang out and we'll send out for food and things like that and so on and so i went over because i you know as being a good boyfriend she was not well and i was willing to go over and kind of help her recuperate and she said you know i've been looking through the love letters that uh, my father wrote to my mother and she says Look at this one. Although it wasn't Alan and Marilyn Bergman's house. Excuse me, it wasn't. It was her home. It was her home. Okay. It was her home that I went to. And so she was looking through these letters. And she says, look at this one letter. It was the letter in which my father proposed to my mother. Letter. I read the letter and it said, what are you doing the rest of your life? Uh -huh. <laughs> Alan Marilyn Bergman then wrote a song called What Are You Doing for the Rest of Your Life? That was a great song. And she looked at me and she said, they stole that song for my father. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out they did. Yep. Yeah. So these are strange little situations I've been in in my life. But anyway, yeah, no, she wasn't at her aunt and uncle's place. She was at her own place. Because I remember when it was it was very expensive home, okay? And when it was time for me to leave, I'd say goodbye. She says, well, have the maid let you out. Well, <laughs> I, I'm I'm kind of like a hippie in those days. I got hair down to here. I'm I, I, I'm too hip to have the, you know, have the maid be low enough to have to let me out, okay? I don't believe in that sort of thing. So I just figure I'll just leave myself. And I open the door and the alarm goes off. <laughs> Next thing I know, because it's a very expensive neighborhood, 10 seconds later, two cars pull up to the driveway with their lights on. They're going, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and she comes to the door and she says, you didn't ask the maid to let you out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I never was very good at being in expensive homes. You know, it's just not my type of thing. Anyway, so um, let me see here. What else is happening in this world? We're watching. What are we watching? Watching that animal thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just about the history of animals and the, uh, you know. Well, the planets, too. Life on planet, Earth. And, and how it evolved. You know. And how it went through. Do you know it went through five extinctions? We, the, there were five extinctions. Ah, before, this last one was the, the Before the meteor hit. Yeah, that was the fifth one. There were four before it. And look at Charlie's going, I knew that. <laughs> there were five, four other extinctions, right? Extinct, right. Mass extinction yeah. events. And what were they? Were they all um, meteorites and things like that? Oh, no. no, there were some of them were just the volcanoes. That... Yeah, well, it was a real big one that almost wiped out 90% of the world's yeah. platforms. Yeah. So, Volcanic eruptions, yeah. The ones that stayed in the holes and in the water survived. Yeah. And you know, I mean, we're we're not too far from that. So maybe I another mass extinction. Is on its way out. Mass extinction coming. 
Yeah, we yeah. may cause the next one. Humans. Well, that's what this thing says. Yeah. Because we're causing it already. Yeah. They, they said we survived because we were smart and because we we were cunning. And we were inventive and things like that. That's what made us survive. But that may be the thing that winds up killing us. Because we learned to create fossil fuels. And we learned to do this and do that. And that, you know, I don't want to depress you, by the way. Uh, you're you doing know. a good job. Yeah. <laughs> do they think there's going to be another extinction event? Well, there will be eventually, I imagine. They say it's happening. Yeah. yeah but we got gas masks now. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to help you with climate change. <laughs> I don't want to be here where mankind is fighting for water and food. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been going way before that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but don't worry. If, if Trump is president, he'll just tell you it's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It'll yeah, be gone by Easter. Well, you know, alternative I, facts. I kind of, I kind of figure when you talk about a mass extinction event. I mean, wasn't COVID kind of a mass extinction event? No. Look no. how many people died. Oh, oh yeah, but that was only species. six million. We're talking about entire species of life. Yeah. 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 Well, at least uh, you know we can be happy to know it killed would kill Putin. So you know. Cross. Uh, huh. As the fingers crossed, it'll kill me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right. um, well, I'm going to go. So. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You have your yeah, you have, to, yeah. you have your little thing. What is Bye -bye. it? Bye. What, what is it? It's it's a class, right? A class. Yeah. Gym. Yeah. And, 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 Y'all are depressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Enjoy. <laughs> Well, well, it's obviously good for you, Mandy. We'll so leave you with something happy. You will be you, missed man. when you leave. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. And by the way, Paula, I have that same shirt. Oh, this one? Or the this same. One? I have a flannel shirt, that same pattern. Oh, very yeah. nice. <laughs> very, very nice. Well, you, so how, how am I, are you going to be doing this every week now? Well, I guess for now. I mean, I'm not really. It's not a big deal. I don't have to be there on time because I'm yeah. not teaching. I just try to get there. Well, yeah, uh, uh, it must be fun to do it, and I'm glad you're doing it. And we, we appreciate any amount of time you can spend with us. <laughs> I appreciate you doing it every week. I really well, do. Enjoy. Okay. Well, thank I appreciate you being here. Well, you appreciate me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, yeah. Thank bye you. Bye. Appreciate bye. it. Bye. There she goes, ladies and gentlemen. Our 50 minute gal. <laughs> <laughs> what we will call her. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Where do, did we lose somebody else too? No. No, she's the only one. No, I guess she's the only one. We went from 10 to 9. Yeah. Now we look like a really bad episode of Brady Bunch. Yeah, yeah I hate it when it's like this. We do look like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> you know, I'll, like I'll, I'll, I'll look down at. Uh, uh, Oh no! I'm, no, if I, no. Here I'm. I can look down and see, uh, uh burger. That's right. But, it's kind of like the Hollywood Squares. But on on <laughs> on the on uh, on online, uh, I'm in the on the end, so I have to look over at burger. That's right. <laughs> right well, I can't. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, so um um. Uh, oh, we also, you know, I got to tell you, I've been watching a show. Anybody been watching? Anybody have Apple TV here? Yeah. Apple TV Plus. I think it's the best of all the systems right now. It took yeah. over HBO used to it, be. it took over the kind of quality and the kind of inventiveness that HBO used to do. Uh, and uh, we've watched some things that we didn't even know what it was we just said well let's watch it and it was great you know they really picked great stuff well they got this show called uh, lessons in chemistry oh yeah yeah good that's from a novel right yes, yes. i gotta tell yes. you this is the best tv show i've seen in years fantastic i mean it's amazingly good um and it's it, it it's a it's a weepy You'll, I, I cry a little bit watching it. It's a, it's a, but it's a great show. It's got 
every person who's acting in this show is terrific, including, get this, the dog on the show. <laughs> the dog is amazing. And there's a little girl and she's terrific. And, you know, there are all these various people in it. And, it, and, and the script is terrific. And it's just, if you get a chance in any way, watch this show. It's just, I'm, I'm amazed by it. you. You agree with me, don't you, Marjorie? Oh, yeah, it's absolutely great. When we first watched it, we went, what is this? You know, and by the third episode, we were hooked, just hooked. And then we just watched the last episode. And I said, Marjorie, do you know of a more perfect TV show that we've ever seen? And she says, no, you know. It's the first time we've agreed in our entire marriage. That wasn't the last episode of the season, Alex. It oh, was no. just till next week. Till next week, yeah. 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 But the, you know what it is? It used to be the series went for 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. I remember when there were 22. Now they go to eight episodes. Or 10. What's that? You know? That's part of the whole writer's strike. Yeah, I didn't have to do with the writer's strike. No, yep. it, the writer's the strike is about how they're doing shorter and they're not making enough. Oh, money. oh, really? Is that yeah. one yeah. The, it was one of the one of the motives of the strike to get them to do more episodes. Well, is how how they they get hired to do a series and they used to make money over twenty something episodes. Yeah, and now they only do eight, so they don't make much money. Yep. Even though the the biggest part of the series is the creation of the whole idea in the first place, not the episodes. Well, I think they'd be happy with thirteen episodes because that's an that used to be the average uh, amount for a series on non television. Yeah, streaming. non. Streaming. Uh, it used to be twenty two episodes. Yeah, for a network show, still is I think of them for the most part. But uh, uh, the thing that kind of got me, I was telling Marjorie. Is that they they're doing this thing where they're uh, 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 they're uh, only doing eight episodes when it wouldn't cost them that much more to do thirteen episodes. In fact, it would be more cost effective. Yeah, because once you've got your props made and your costumes made and your whatever, the only thing you're paying for is a script and the people doing the show. Most most of the British shows are eight ten episodes. Well, yeah. some some of them are years. some of them are four. Yeah, you know, but that's England because the BBC didn't have a lot of money. Yeah, you know, and the BBC was always working on those kind of budgets. However, yeah, the, arc, the arcs of the stories are. I I mean I I could stand to get you know thirteen episodes of uh, the lessons in chemistry. You know so. Uh, it, and so it really disappoints me when I when I get to like episode six and I go, oh, there are only three more episodes of this. I want there to be 12 more episodes of this. There will next year. But next year, I got to wait a whole year. I don't know if I'm going to be alive in a year. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Take your chances. <laughs> yeah, well, take my chances. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so that kind of bothers me. I don't know. So, uh would you would you would raise your hand here? Yeah, I, I was going to mention that, that I saw uh, a good movie on uh, Netflix, which is a pretty unusual these days. Uh, uh, it's called Nyad, and it's about uh, Diana Nyad, who, yeah, who swam right. from yeah. Cuba to to uh, uh, Miami, yeah, to yeah. To, to, uh, to Florida, yeah, and it's uh, Annette Bening and and Jodie Foster, and they're terrific, really. Who play, but who plays Nyad? Can't be either of them. Oh, Diana Bening was it? Annette Bening. Say what? Didn't Benning play Nyad? He plays, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, 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 who made that? Uh, it's like a, a hundred mile uh, um, swim. Yeah. Um, well, she plays her as an when she person. was like 64, 65. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, now I remember that whole thing about the age, too. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's, it's, uh, I thought it was a, a put together movie and it was, it was, uh, and it was based on on uh, a real life thing, and and the acting was really fun to watch. I saw and Annette Benning did all the swimming in that herself. Wow! She trained with Olympic swimmer swimming coaches for that. Really? All right, and Marjorie, here's the capper. She had no makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Annette Benning's held together pretty well. Yeah, she looks pretty good. You know, very impressive. Wrinkles and all. I love wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. 
Have you met my wife? <laughs> Ellen <laughs> Mary, Sally Field. Those are all some gorgeous ladies with uh, wrinkles. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the, I've been watching the morning show. Uh, uh, it's interesting to see. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Get older. She's doing okay. Yeah. She has a lot of work, Alex. <laughs> you think so? And makeup. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> hmm. How do you know they nest? Every, every, you, you say to me, oh, that person's had a lot of work done. How do you know maybe they haven't had a lot of work done and they're just aging well? Well, first of all, Instagram shows the before, during, and yeah. after. You <laughs> see all that. So you can't disguise that. But she has. I mean, you know, she, shape is different. Okay, I saw Barry Manilow in an interview. Oh, oh forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to hear. They had he's, to do. They had to he's, do 80, he's eighty one or something. He's just like an old guy. Well, the next, the next facelift for him so is going to be done with a Derek. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, if you're going to get a facelift, at least do it so it doesn't look like a facelift. You know, they went like this. You know. <laughs> You know, and also, if you ever notice, like, uh, uh, well, Barbara Walters, while she was still alive in her last years, if women get too many facelifts, they yeah. get kind of a, it's kind of a dent in here, mm. you know, and I don't know why they do that, because they don't really have to. And, you know, the kind of work that used to be impossible they're doing now is the neck. Mm -hmm. They didn't, weren't able to do the neck for years. They didn't have a way of doing it. But now they do. I think they pull from the back. I don't know. It's, <laughs> no, really. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. But, uh, um, and then there are guys who don't get work done. Uh, I don't think Sean Connery ever had any work done. Robert Redford? Robert yeah. Redford hasn't oh, had any work, any work done. done. Yeah. Uh, Wood, I don't think. Well, I, the thing with um, here is the thing with Sean Connery. He said, I always play parts that are older than I am. Hmm. So that as I age, no one will be bothered by it. Hmm. You know, and he, he, he looked good up to the last couple of films he did. And then he, he stopped doing movies. And who knows how he looked when he died? Probably dead. That's how he was. <laughs> well, he had Alzheimer's or something toward the oh, end. He with his throat too. He had trouble talking. Well, he had yeah, he had some kind of throat cancer that was operated on. But and he went, he went the last TV appearance he ever made was on the Letterman show, where he went on the Letterman show to say, People are saying I'm dying and I'm not. And I just wanted to come on this show to tell you that I'm I'm not dying from this. So that was good. But anyway, <laughs> we're getting towards the end of the show. I so like this gathering. You're nice people. You're totally... It is. No, they're all, you're all nice people. And that's uh, as it should be. And if you watch this program and you want to be part of it and you're nice, <laughs> you know, we'll give you a shot. I you got to be careful putting it on because a lot of times when we get new people and they aren't here to do anything else yeah, was no. a bad time. Don't you think it's interesting the number of people who watch this and there aren't new people joining? Mm -hmm. it's, well, it's, you know, it, yeah, but I think they, I think they tune in and watch this show for the people. I really do. I think they, they like the combination of everybody. It just makes for a nice time. I yeah. had some odd Facebook requests from people who watch the show once. Actually. Yeah, like so, what? Just I don't. I don't connect with folks that I don't actually know. So, but yeah, people I have no idea who they are making. Oh, I heard you made this comment. I'd love to connect, kind of thing. And wow, I know who they are so really. I write back and say, well, what? Yeah, what for? And then they don't write again. Mm -hmm. But some of those are phishing attempts. Yeah, that's well, my. That's why I don't just connect with anybody. Yeah, well, it's funny that it's hard for me to trust most people. When they try to come on here and I don't know their name, 
Uh, and God knows I could, we could get a brand new caller to the show, but then I see somebody come up and I go, I don't know, should I try that or not try that? The way, best way to do is I try it, but if they don't connect fast with me, in other words, click on that, their thing. Uh, I, I, I know they're having, they're getting ready to run some kind of tape of somebody, you know, doing something. relieving themselves. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know. And so, uh, but I, uh, on the other show, I, I do the, do it through a, through a switcher. And anytime I put on a person, I don't know, I put my face up on the screen until right. I know that person is okay. So then we can add new people to it, but. Here we don't. So I'm, I appreciate the fact that you guys are always there. I mean, occasionally we're missing a few people today. We're missing Al, Albert, who obviously can't call because he's visiting us. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, Brian. Uh, what? Brian. Brian. Brian, yeah. You know, people and, and a few other people who call regularly. But, you know, it, it's different every week. And it's so wonderful. You're just a wonderful bunch of people. And I really <laughs> appreciate you. And oh, Marjorie, what happened? I, I'm yeah. not listening to what you always say to me. I'm glad I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, our good friend Andrew Deutsch. Oh, uh, always good to see you here because you're a funny guy. Yeah, Charlene, thank you so much for having joined us. And I hope uh, everything's good out where you are. Marjorie, good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Len LaFrisco, who's near Frisco, uh, yeah, yeah, which you don't call it Frisco, by the way. Uh, no, no. I don't know. The only reason you can't call it Frisco is there was a guy, a writer in San Francisco for the Chronicle named Herb Kane. Yeah. And he wrote a book called Don't Call It Frisco. So nobody now it's Don't Call It Frisco. Um, call it Sand. Everybody says San Fran or the city, you know, city, the city. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because it's a whole Bay Area, you know, sure. The, the whole population is the Bay Area. But on the East Coast, New York is the city. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I don't know if I, how much longer I want to live here. I, I don't like New York that much. I have to sign off right now. I've got something. Go. Wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Let me sign you off. Okay? <laughs> Talking. Thank you very much, Paula. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Scott Boddicker. And thanks to Charlie. We enjoy having all of you here, and especially somebody who's going to sign us off by, uh, by the name of uh, Edward Berger, who's going to sign us off by saying, That's all, folks. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice week. We'll see you next week.